It's time to hack the movies. Today, we're talking about tapes. Talking about tapes. Hello. Hello. Hi. What's your favorite scary movie? Because because it's Scream, and that's that's what he says. Why is it got to be a he? It is true. That is true. Later. That's what <laughs> that's what they say. Um, yes, we are the anniversary, which I believe is today. Yeah. I believe today really? is the twenty fifth anniversary. Shut up about when it premiered at the Chinese theater or yeah, when no it, it's when its red carpet was. We're that talking was about the wide release. It's, it was the 18th. It's still the same thing. Whatever. It's, we're talking about the wide release. It was the 20th. Yes. Yeah. Scream. Yes. Uh, what a great movie to put out in December. Yeah, what? <laughs> I, I love it. And there's no Christmas stuff in it either. It really Nothing. is. <laughs> Nothing. Um, Not filmed in the winter. Nothing. Yeah, Just, hey, horror movie in December. And I wish they did that more often because... Fuck all the Christmas movies that come out. It's weird that it's a horror movie in December that's not Christmas themed. It's just here it no, is. No, I'm okay yeah. with it. I'm totally okay with it. Yes, we need this more is of that. Uh, Scream, directed by the late Wes Craven. Yeah, this is probably yes. like his his most well known thing after Nightmare on Elm Street, right? Yeah, I mean, I yeah, because Hills Have Eyes. Hills Have Eyes is nowhere near no, as big. No, it's yeah. not. I mean, that is that was like his big one, but yeah, it's not Scream or no, it is I'm not. I'm trying to scream. think of all of his other movies, but no, I think Nightmare on. I mean, don't get me wrong, Nightmare I love Elm Street, probably Scream, and then maybe Hills Have Eyes. Look, I love the live action Swamp Thing movie. I thought Swamp you did Thing's a great job on that. Uh, I think Swamp Thing, unfortunately, is like further down. Yeah. Um, no, this is definitely we're, we're talking about franchises he built. This is definitely like the second this biggest is the one. Same, yeah. He created uh, two insanely large franchises. He's a fucking uh, amazing person. Uh, the Hills of Ice franchise is also big, but not as good. Not as no. That it's, remake's really good. It's good. Oh, I actually really enjoyed the remake. Of yeah, that the one. remake. I think it's one of those like it's like very rare remakes where it's like, hey, hey, this original one it could have worked a little bit better. I think that one is yeah, pretty good. I'll, I'll agree on that. However, uh, yes, the late Wes Craven, twenty fifth anniversary. Uh, it is a clever deconstruction and parody of the slasher genre which he already experimented with a bit actually can you grab me new nightmare new nightmare was first right yes yes it has to be right, yes. right. This no is, it uh, is 95 yes so he already kind of did this sort of uh fourth wall breaking stuff with new nightmare because like the horror genre was kind of dying at this point too which I mentioned in the very first episode of talking about tapes, Wishmaster, how that I feel like that movie, which also produced by Wes Craven, um, that movie came a little too late or else I in that review, I say that would have been the next big like boogeyman. But it came yeah. too late. And unfortunately, Scream kind of put a nail in the slasher genre. It's kind of yeah. like I mean, eventually the slasher genre were bounced back. There were a lot of slashers that came out after this trying to be this. Yeah, we covered one of them. I know what you did last summer, which. I mean, I got a soft spot for. It was I know what you did last summer? It was before or after this. That was, was oh, yeah, definitely after. after this. Really? Because it was. What year was this again? This was ninety six. Yeah, ninety six. Ninety six. I know what you did last summer because this is the same writer. Yes, it was afterwards. It was after. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, yeah, a lot of movies tried to be like this, but then like after this, they brought back like Michael Myers. Yeah. They made it more like Scream. They brought back Bride of. They brought back Chucky, but Chucky actually benefited from this. Because Chucky would find right. I, yeah. Oh my gosh. The, I we love that. We should have. I had the dolls. I know. I we know. should Tiffany actually. We should actually recap season one of it because they just I, announced season two. Yeah, season two. I need to watch. It. I need I to watch it. It's all on Peacock now, but yeah, it's also on USA. Anyway. But yeah, if you look at her, Tiffany's uh, or her name, um, Jennifer Tilly. Yes, Jennifer Tilly. Go, I, I'm obsessed with her Twitter. What a babe. She and made a she, Twitter for Tiffany, her Tiffany doll. It has its own Twitter. I never You didn't know that? that. Yeah. She gave her doll her yeah. own Twitter. What? <laughs> anyway. I, love I, love, I think she's so fucking phenomenal. She's great. And I she love just, her. oh, like, she is that. Like, she's mm. what is keeping the Chucky universe alive. It's so amazing. But, yeah, Scream. It's a very, very clever movie. I think... The spiritual successor to this for me is Shaun of the Dead. How that's like a total deconstruction yeah, of yeah, the yeah. zombie genre. I love Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, so that is good. amazing. Uh, but no, especially as someone who grew up with slasher movies, I really, I really like this movie. I, there was a period of time where I didn't like it. 
But that's because so many movies were trying to be like it. It's like, oh, fucking but scream. Like, blame those movies, not this. No, yeah. but, and then yes, I got older. Course, I'm like, no, this movie's great. This movie's great. This is just like a homage. Yeah. I just find this. This is like the homage to all the horror films, slasher at least. Can I just say... I am shocked you pronounced that word right. I was Leave expecting, her alone. I was expecting, listen, I was expecting homo- homage or homage. You're a homage. I, yeah, your face <laughs> is a homage. <laughs> so it's insane. I can, I have problems doing really easy things and pronouncing easy things. But when it comes to really difficult things, I'm really good at them. <laughs> like it just doesn't. That's how my I life. I start over my words too. You're fine. I'm, Oh, what did it's Mint say? Mint said a word in one of the reviews, and we, me and Riley were like, holy, we did not expect you to nail that me and, word. <laughs> me and Mint had a conversation Leave us alone. about that. <laughs> so with Mint, it's just like she'll say words, but mean a different word, but the other word is the first thing that pops in her head. I was like, I understand you. <laughs> Sometimes brains reroute differently because there's so much happening. Yes. So when did you guys first see this movie? When it came out. You didn't see this in theaters. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, uh, it We're was, like first and second grade when yeah, this came out. Fuck you. Um, it had to be because I specifically remember hanging out with my friend Tessie a lot. And she had this. Well, wait, it's awesome. She had a huge collection. Make up a name. Oh, my God. You were hanging out with your friend Melania. Go. <laughs> Melania. So you and Melania were hanging out. Go. So then I murdered Tony. <laughs> no, but I was hanging out. came back. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> No, I was hanging out with my friend a lot or whatever as a child. I I don't know, maybe like fifth, sixth grade, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just remember specifically always really watching this and the mummy together. It was like our thing. Was this part of a sexual awakening for you? Who uh, who in this movie did it for you? Hmm. The, every goddamn movie we've reviewed lately was a different sexual awakening for Joe. I can see the mummy. Are you kidding me? I can the, totally the see mummy the mummy. I'm having sex with every single one but of them. But specifically, like, <laughs> beautiful. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. Listen, recently, like we did like Spider-Man 2, Alfred Molina. We did uh, fucking Lord of the Rings, uh, Harry Potter. Each movie we've done lately was a different sexual awakening. For um, I can see that. Though. Right now, there's an obsessed fan doing a timeline of when you got in the <laughs> uh, I don't know. I didn't really get into really anybody until like later. Like, what, is it Nev? Ne- Nev Campbell. Nev, Nev, it is Nev. Yeah. Okay. Um, I like her more now. Like, I like her as she's aged. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now I'm like super, like when she was in House of Cards, I was like, oh, damn, girl. <laughs> oh, what's up? I mean, I like, I prefer this version, but I like all versions of Nev Campbell. So, I, I mean, mean, I'd still go back and know, smash, but yeah. yeah. I think Eddie. actually I have a bin of magazines. I think I have an FHM magazine with Nev Campbell around here somewhere. <laughs> Literally a bin of magazine, like of just her? That's no, what, just magazines. I just imagine you having a crazy collection. I have imagine. I have a box of, of old magazines, and I know one of them is an FHM with Nev Campbell. Yeah, so I don't you have to open it, and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then that's how you know. So. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Guys had different types of obsessions over like artists. Like the only artist I was ever obsessed with was Eminem, Marshall. So I was like, oh, I love Marshall Mathers. Blah blah blah. I was obsessed yeah. with him in middle school, or not even before that, elementary school. Because okay. I started listening to the Slim Shady LP and this and that, a uh, whole bunch of things, I think in fourth or fifth grade. When did the movie come out? Eight Mile. Oh, oh. I remember going to the movie. I just knocked over. Wow. There was something hanging Rest on Lola Bunny, like a piece of dust or something, and I just knocked her over. This Killed is her. how he's so engaged in our conversation. <laughs> I'm. You know what, Crystal? You have a lot to say, and I'm letting you talk. I want to hear your voice. I'm giving a voice to the voiceless. Go. I don't want a voice anymore. I don't want a voice anymore. <laughs> I don't want a voice anymore. Finish what you were Look saying. What you've done. Finish you what you were saying. This is all me. your fault. Huh? You distracted me. My brain's now somewhere else. No, Something Mile. about Marshall Mathers I and Eight Mile. Oh no, Ava. Um, I wore like an Eminem shirt, like everything. I was. We wore. My cousin and I were so obsessed. We wore that like ease on our face and stuff like that. Oh my! All right, I've never been that bad. I wanted to have sex with him so bad as like. An elementary school kid. Well, but yeah, it's a, but it's a problem. Because he also had like issues, and I was like, I have issues too. Well, no, but he can not do anything with her, but she can imagine doing things with her because she's exactly. a child. Like she doesn't. It was just weird. Yeah, I really was a child. I was the only person. I had a scrapbook. Every like magazine. That was the only artist I cared about. Huh. And I would have. I mean, I liked the Spice Girls, Backstreet Boys, and Sync. I had the Dolls, but whatever. But I would like actually cut like pictures out, and I had a scrapbook. 
But that ended, I think, when I was in seventh grade. Oh, well, that went pretty far. So that was your. <laughs> that was for probably from fourth to. Seventh. So that was your awakening. Was Eminem? Yeah. Okay. But Jesus what I was Christ. saying was, girls will do scrapbooks and M&M, posters. Though. Yeah, I like the bad boy. It was I the style at the time. Bad boys. I still do. Are you okay? No, <laughs> no. I have Joanna. Joanna. Forgiveness. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No, I am not okay. Never been okay. I really thought that Ghostbusters Afterlife would have got you to forgive. You think so. <laughs> but my point, long story. Yeah. Guys had the magazines, how you knew that they were a fan of someone. It was like pages stuck together. <laughs> Girls had scrapbooks. That was a long story of my point. I did have that an album it. of Tom Felton stuff from Harry Potter. So yeah. Guys, you couldn't look at. So when it was stuck. When did you see Scream? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I know when I saw... Eight Mile, I don't remember seeing Scream. Scream just is always on TV. And I remember seeing bits and pieces hmm. and then eventually seeing all of it. It was played on AMC a lot, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah. It was just always, it was always a movie that I don't remember sitting and watching for the first time, but it, it was there and I've seen it and I've always yeah, liked I, it. I think I saw it the year it came out. My parents rented it, I okay. think. And uh, I really liked it because I knew the movies that they were talking about. Not all of them. It's one of those movies I appreciate more as I get older. Yeah. Because I've seen more and more of the movies. Like, I didn't see Prom Night until like a few years back. So now I get a lot of the Prom Night. Yeah. No, old Prom Night. I not, know. Okay. That just made me think of April Fool's Day. <sighs> I love that movie. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so it's so good. So yeah, this this turned into a huge franchise, uh, which we'll get into in a little bit. But yeah, let's get into the movie. Ooh, I think I first realized. I think or I we'll first let knew- Crystal talk more. <laughs> we will. We will. I love hearing your voice. It's like an angel. Go. I want to slit your throat. Uh, <laughs> so, and I say that with a smile. We're talking about psychos, so you might. I, just, as well I thought you. I thought you'd appreciate me letting you speak. <laughs> With such sarcasm that burns. <laughs> the way you said that. I'm just, I, I want to slit your throat. <laughs> I felt that. Okay, continue. I think I first realized uh, Ghostface more of the uh, what's up commercials and stuff like that. I think that was actually my scary first movie. When scary, scary movie. Scary movie. movie. Which we saw. I say, first, I say scary movie. One, two, and three. After three, I was like, eh. But yeah, we, we only have, have two. two. I mean, oh, Scary Movie Two is good too, good. but, but we, uh, that was the first thing I think I I think I know the what's up before I knew the actual horror movie. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, that was the Fucking. one with the haunting. Yes. Uh, yeah. So let's uh, let can I get into the movie now? We're doing a movie. Yes. Oh. The title sequence shows up, and it's a bunch of people screaming, and the name Scream. <laughs> I feel like this should have came after the Drew Barrymore like death thing, I thought, but instead they just start the movie yeah. off with it. I could see and that. The phone rings. The yes, the phone was, rings. Uh, and the and movie was going to be called something else. What was it going to be called? Scary movie. That's funny, isn't it? It was actually going to be called Scary Movie. That's huh. funny. That's really funny. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Um, yeah. I know little uh, things. I can be smart. <laughs> Drew Barrymore answers. Twenty-one-year-old Drew Barrymore. Which I feel like people made a big deal of that back then. Let's look at Johanna's yeah. boobs. But it's like not a big deal now. Like the problem is uh, older slasher movies, they would have a habit of hiring people in like their mid 20s or like late 20s to be high school kids. Yeah. Are you okay? But she was like, let's look at Johanna's <laughs> boobs. All I could think of was sweater meat heat. <laughs> Guys, we guys, we see you. Remember, when you leave a comment, yeah, when you leave a comment, we comments. will see the comment. You know see that. all the comments. I don't respond all the time, us. but there's some of you where I see you say some shit, and I'm like, all right, guys. If you if you if you slide into someone's DMs, your DMs get shared privately with all of us. We see the DMs. We know what you're asking for. And by the way. I could use more Bitcoin, so whatever you want me to just slide into those he DMs. He can give you deep cleavage. I am literally the only one whose DMs you can slide into and will whore themselves who out for money. Act on and it. I'm the only one who doesn't get any DMs. And it's funny too because my fiance is screaming at me like, do it. And I'm just like, I don't wanna. Drew Barrymore. <sighs> yes. She answers the phone. She is Casey. Casey, yes. Uh and the guy calls her. What's the actor's name? Fuck. Who does the voice of Ghostface? Oh, hold on. The voice is Roger Jackson. Yes, and he does the voice in all of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think even the new one, right? Mm-hmm. 
I don't know if he did the TV show. Did he do the TV show? I don't think he did the TV show. Okay. I think it's different. Uh, yeah, you know? so he's like flirting with her over the phone. He's like, yeah. oh, wrong number. Um, what were you saying about it being a big deal with Drew Barrymore? Oh, because like everyone's like, she wasn't even in high school at the time. She was 20 something. It's like, well, it's not really. Wes a- Craven actually wasn't considered doing this until he found out Drew Barrymore was going to be in it. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And didn't she push for her death like she wanted to die early? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, that was like a big deal because like she's on the cut. Co- okay, can we talk about can we talk about the cover? Yes. It's so 90s. <laughs> it's so 90s. They couldn't get a picture of Skeet Ulrich from what he looked like in the actual film. He's got the you knockoff. You are so well, right not on that. <laughs> like, even that. Um, Sydney, like, Sydney doesn't wear heavy makeup in the movie at all. No. No. She's hey, very look at David Arquette. Yeah, I know. It doesn't look them. like that. <sighs> no, these are all glamour shots of them. It's just to promote. But then they show what they look like in the movie in the yeah. back. It's like, what yeah. the hell? Hide that. Anyway, um, emotion. <laughs> so yeah, she's uh, talking to a guy on the phone who keeps saying he has the wrong number, and he's like trying to flirt with her. But then things go dark pretty quick. Also, she's making popcorn. Mm-hmm. Um, Always makes me want popcorn. And it was a fucking yeah, a little jiffy pop. I love just. I grew up with those going camping. I loved those. I hate them. Why? You hate everything. I don't really have an opinion. I don't have an opinion. You hate everything. I just wanted to have the opposite opinion, but I have no opinion. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Have you ever had Jiffy Pop? Yeah, I'm sure I have. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so he asked her, like, what's her favorite scary movie? What's her answer again? Halloween. You know, the one with the guy in the white mask who walks around and stalks babysitters. Did you say Nightmare on Elm Street? She said uh, she didn't like Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, yeah. Right? Didn't she say she didn't Well, she like said she Nightmare liked it. The first one was good, but the sequel sucked. And yeah. yeah, that's what she said. By yeah. the way, kind of kind of tacky plugging your own stuff in your movie. Like I think it's Name hilarious. dropping another movie in your movie. That's pretty lame. I, I love Wes Craven, but that's like some self-promotion. Did she say Halloween? I think she did, yeah. I think actually. she says Halloween. But yeah, you know, the self-promotion there is kind of cheesy. Um, you know what's a good horror movie? Hack the Living Dead. And uh, I think everyone should watch that movie. It would have been a lot better if you would have filmed my scene the way you were supposed to. No. But you apparently don't have any time. No, I don't have any time. I'm not in it. Oh, well, it sucks. Sorry. Tony hates me. <laughs> so, yeah, she's uh, talking about scary movies. Uh, they name drop Night of the Living Dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, he starts threatening her and like scaring her and he's like don't you hang up blah 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 I'll gut you or whatever yeah I'll gut you like a fish gut you like a fish like the Grinch With, yeah <laughs> <laughs> I do like this scene when she's like on the phone backing up toward the door you can see her boyfriend's silhouette outside yeah. like before he's revealed I thought that was pretty clever uh, he decides to play a game with her because yeah. uh, her boyfriend's tied up. He's all beat up. And he's Steve. like, I'm, Steve. Steve. He's like, I'm going to kill Steve. He's big and he plays football. He's going <laughs> to kick your ass. <laughs> Oops. Um, but yeah, so she has to answer a bunch of movie questions to save him. Mm-hmm. And the one question is, who was the killer in Friday the 13th? She says Jason, it's but not it's Jason. not Jason. It's his mother, which I enjoy. She's wearing a white sweater. She should know. Jason's mom wears the white sweater. Ooh. I think that's I think a it's a bluish. It, there is bluish so many sweater. tiny little things that a lot of people don't even realize. I'm pretty sure that was supposed to be like that's the actually joke kind of it. funny. Uh, yeah, probably. Because he, she, that's what was it? That was the third question. Yes. And she got the first two right. Yes. And hopefully, I'll edit it by now. We went to the Friday the Thirteenth camp and we shot a little video there. So mad I couldn't go. Can we go again? Can you guys go again so I can go? I mean, it's your lake. Oh, yeah, it's my lake. Oh, my God. <laughs> I just want to be like, I'm at my lake where there's murder. There's a lot. Oh, of- my God. I forgot. There's a part where I literally steal the camera at one point, and I'm just like, oh, there's little salamanders going sail, sail. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica's with me. We're like, oh. You know, a lot of people kill themselves around the holidays. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Tony. Uh, yeah, so cool. she fucks up and they like, Steve gets got it. Like, yeah, I was gonna say, he's oh got it. Like, I always forget how what? gory this one is. Can you see great. the steam coming Yeah. Up? Oh, you know what it is? I think I watched this, like, they played it on TV a bunch and they always crop that out. Uh, um, like, you hear? Yeah. The, but, pfft. like, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, a lot it's of guts. Gory. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, pretty it's gory. It's a great opening scene. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, and then Ghostface jumps through the door or whatever. Uh, Ghostface just 
has no regard for his own body. He just like will burst through things. His adrenaline's he, pumping. Yeah. And yeah. that's really what it is because you realize later that the killers are just normal people and mm. you hear it and you see it through every attack that they're not the typical yeah, slasher. Because when she I hits really him, he's like, Ugh! yeah, I love yeah. the sound effects that they make. Like they're reacting kind of not truthfully. Although, much, but like Michael Myers made some grunts and stuff early on. But not as many like that. Yeah. This is it like was pure, nice. this is pure human. You know, it was nice seeing a slasher run again. Because Jason used to run. Slashers did run, but people really liked Michael Myers, and eventually they all started walking. Yeah. And somehow they still caught up with their victim. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. I don't know why she's still on the phone. I think she just wasn't thinking. She just had it in yeah. her hand, and she's just this, running. Well, and... the whole point of that is an homage to when a stranger calls. Right, right. Because the killer's coming inside. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she um, she goes to run, and uh, she gets stabbed in the boob. She dies. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's... in the boob. In the boob. No, scary movie is the boob. The boob, because the implant comes out. Got the implant. <laughs> I love that he's just like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you get stabbed. I say I saw that before Scream. And this part. I remember that part, and I couldn't take this movie <laughs> as seriously when I saw her get them getting stabbed. This yeah. part is like kind of messed up because her parents are coming home, and she's like right near them screaming for them yeah, as they're getting Because he was choking her, so she didn't have yeah, a voice she anymore. she didn't yeah. have a voice. And that was supposed yeah. to be And she's yelling, another... trying to yell mom. Which... But... Reminds me of Halloween too, when Jamie Lee yes. Curtis is in the hospital, hospital parking lot. Yeah, yep, this is an homage to that. Uh, but yeah, and then it's also messed up when the mom gets on the phone. And she can hear. And she can hear her Literally hear her die. Oh my God, I can hear that. <laughs> Another yeah. Halloween reference. The McKen go yes. to the McKenzie's go house. The McKenzie's, um, the same thing Lori told uh, Lindsay and Tommy. Yes, mm -hmm. and then they open up the door and Drew Paramore's just hanging from a tree with her guts also, yeah, spilled out. Also they, got in. So what? I actually... So that th that was supposed to be an homage to Suspiria? I can see that with the yeah, hanging. Yeah, that's yeah. what they said. Yeah. I was like, I can see that. I can totally but, you know, that. um Ghostface timed this Suspiria. poorly. This could have all gone really wrong at some point. Yeah, he's <laughs> not a professional. They're, yeah, absolutely not. Things conveniently work out for him a little too much. Come on. <laughs> it's it's super self-aware of it, too. <laughs> like, <they don't>, this <laughs> is a movie that's very aware. I don't think hmm. this was a movie that was meant to take it very yeah. seriously. And either. as we as we said before we started the episode when other things are being talked about, uh the ghost face mask was a popular costume mm -hmm. uh that they had to like license. And actually it almost wasn't that. I think uh Bob Weinstein, the other Weinstein who didn't do anything wrong yet. Um I'm, I'm like they'll probably find <laughs> yeah. something on him. <laughs> I know. So. Uh, yeah, apparently he wanted them to shoot different scenes with different masks and test it out, and then he was like, "All right, this mask works," and he didn't bring it up was again. Was it him that said who watched it and said the very like ha beginning of the movie he hated the mask, and everyone convinced him to keep watching? There was. Someone... I think they tried out a few masks to like show him, and then that was like the and best one. And he was one. like, "Finally, I'll take this one." But that yeah, one. so that's yeah. like a mask that they just sell. They used it for the movie. It's very popular costume. And then you had the one with the tongue sticking out from scary. Movie. Yeah, but that's why season one of Scream they don't. There's season one and two they don't use that mask. Yeah, because I don't think they wanted to license I the company liked... again. The I, first two seasons. I never seen first it. First season. So, well, the second was okay. That one after it with the girl from well, the Punisher. The, that entire. Well, they season ruined was, it with that. Uh, they ruined season two with the Halloween special that derailed everything. Anyway, yeah. we're not going to talk you, about. We'll talk about that at the end. Okay, because I. Oh my god, it was so it. frustrating. Oh. No, because like real quick, like the Scream fans, they're like, this show's gonna suck. And then they watch them like this show is actually great. And then season two, and they're like, ah, Halloween special. Ugh. And then the reboot, season three. Pfft, I didn't even finish it. It was so bad. Um, yeah. Then we girl get makes to a see comment about like, oh, because he says like, oh yeah, you cut class, and the girl's like, don't say cut around me. It's a bad idea because she's all emo and cuts herself. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding? That girl is super hot, but what? not enough to watch that show. Was it an MTV? Yeah. Ah, yeah. How did I guess that? Um, because soon as you say that kind of stuff, I'm like, by the way, TV show. Uh, Nev Campbell is a babe in this. I, I always forget how goddamn cute she is in this. She's always a babe. She's a yes. babe no matter what. Uh, and her dad is conveniently le leaving for the whole week. Uh, and her boyfriend, Billy, is trying to sneak into her bedroom. I've never been so jealous of the way her door and closet close. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. I've always wanted to have a I like they like set that, that up. Like, they set that up for later. That's actually like, pretty uh, clever. Wasn't That's a no mod. When he comes into the... Um, 
the bedroom. That's an homage to, uh, which one is it? Was it Nightmare on Elm Street? Yes, yes, I think were, I yeah. think Johnny Depp like yeah, crosses the window, Depp. right? They're trying to reenact a uh, Johnny Depp scene. <laughs> I guess that's why he looks like Johnny Depp. He does. <laughs> he does. Especially on the cover with his stupid goatee. I mean, um, kind of sexy though. <laughs> I mean, he's still for, hot. Yeah. I mean, as much as I love Matthew Lillard, I would fuck the other one if I had to pick. It was just like that that psycho bad not boy. Both. Oh, whoa, you got a point. Whoa, no. <laughs> that would be no, 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 no. fun. Family show. Anyway. Where? Uh, so, yeah, speaking of family show, he's talking about how he's watching The Exorcist yes. <laughs> on TV, which is the only horror movie that I approve of because it, it drives people to Christianity. Um, Catholicism. Uh, but, yeah, he talks about how it was edited for TV and it cuts out all the good, good stuff. stuff. And he's like, that feels like our relationship, babe. Like we were hot and heavy. And then. Your, your mom died. Your stupid mom got murdered. He doesn't she say ruined that. Everything. <laughs> He's like, now we're edited for television. He's like, can we uh do some over the clothes action? And I was like, this is wrong. This is wrong. This poor young girl is being manipulated by this pervert. And I do not appreciate it. Does this mean that Tony's still a virgin? <laughs> If you know all of this I, is against God and he's so Crystal, religious. Crystal, 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 I am born again virgin. <laughs> born again. <laughs> Starting today, I am a virgin. <laughs> I don't want to get murdered. And according That's to what I was just going to say, actually. <laughs> born again rules. counts, right? <laughs> Does born again count? Can you say that to a killer? No, no, no. Listen, listen. I was a super whore in the past. Sure. I got my but hymen as of right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why you got it research. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, she asks if he will settle for a PG-13. She flashes him. Uh, the, by the way, the whole time this is happening, a weird ass cover of "Fear Don't Fear the Reapers" playing. There's a lot of weird. This soundtrack's like weird '90s. Yeah, like very grunge. It's still like it. kind of grungy a little I bit. I love grunge. I think grunge is actually coming back, which is weird. Yeah. A lot of people are like, prepare for the posers. And I'm like, speaking. Of Exorcist, Linda Blair is one of the reporters. Yes, she is. She showed no, up. She, I'm like, that's Linda Blair. Yeah, she doesn't show up till uh, no, after. No, she's in that. She comes back later. Oh, I didn't realize. I oh, no, yeah, she's throughout the movie. Oh, she's throughout the movie. Yeah, but she I gets know interviewed. She comes too. back right after she gets attacked. Yeah, no, but she's here. She's here earlier. <sighs> I think that's phenomenal. Um, that she's yeah, nice. and then we meet Kale Weathers in the worst outfit I've ever seen. It's a bright green, right? It's like a lime green. Wait, it's yeah. weird. It's very ugly. Yeah, she wears some weird ass shit. It's very nineties, and it's very well, ugly. But she comes. Nothing is as bad as her bangs in the second movie, <gasps> which she made fun oh, of recently. Oh, she made fun, so or was it the third bad. one? I forget which one, but she made fun of Isn't the bangs the recently. One? It's either the second or third one. I, I thought it was the second one. one. Oh my God, it's so funny. Um, Do you know she actually was not going to be cast in this because of Friends? She's such a good person in Friends. She wanted to they, play like a bitch role, yeah. Yeah, and they didn't think she could do it. And she's like, no, I have to get out of the Friends And then Friends she does it in Scrubs thing. too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm so and happy And whatever she this part. show so she good. was on, was it Cougar Town? Cougar Town, or, yeah. Or Dirt? With uh, Dirt? The, the woman who plays Jordan in Scrubs too. Sure. Um, oh, actually, I've actually watched a bit of Scrubs. Scrubs. <laughs> I never watched Cougar Down. I didn't either. Uh, All I know is the giant meme or whatever with her in a giant wine glass. And I was like, I can yeah. appreciate that. So Rose McGowan, who I'm sure has a name, uh, she tells Sydney that there was a murder. Uh, and here we get hints that You don't Sydney's, remember Tatum's name? That's what it is. Uh, we get hints that uh, something happened to Sid's mother because she's like, this is the worst murder since. Oh, and then she like dances around it. Uh, but yeah, she gets pulled into the principal's office. With Isn't Prince. it the anniversary though too? Uh, the anniver day? anniversary is coming up. Oh, uh, okay. But yeah, they yeah, go yeah. to Principal Fonzarelli's office. Uh, <laughs> Henry Winkler. Winkler. Yeah. Who, by the way, he is such a red herring. They want you to think he's the killer, but they make him real creepy. Where he's like touching her face. And he's like, they just want to ask you some questions. And even the cops, like you see Dewey, Dewey. Uh, Deputy Dewey. Yes, you Deputy see, Dewey. you see, like both the cops being like, "That's a little weird. We should probably, should probably uh, keep an eye on this guy." He's just a weird dude. Let, let's hope uh, touching the face is the extent of it. Um, you do see the uh, the Fonz jacket. I was going to say later on it. they have the Fonz jacket. I love it. There's so many little things, that, like so many Easter eggs in this movie. It's great. It's fun. It's yeah. just a su fun movie. So they're asking him for. Uh, they're asking her some questions about what happened. She doesn't know. Yeah. Uh, and then we meet Stu. Matthew Lillard mm -hmm. yes. and Randy, who is uh, Jamie Kennedy, mm -hmm. who we all love. 
from Son of the Mask, and I have a Son of the Mask uh, <laughs> trailer right here. Oh, that's Why? funny. Yeah. I, the guy won't answer me. <laughs> Fucking, uh, we were talking to the guy who won the Nintendo Power uh, contest to be in the Mask 2. Oh. Um, but then the Mask 2 never got made, so they gave him a bunch of stuff. Eventually, they did make it. Yeah. And we were in talks with him to come on rental reviews, and then 2020 happened. What's and rental reviews? <laughs> a show that hates women. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Justin Silverman. <laughs> Justin Silverman hates women. So, uh, I've been trying to like, I try to get in contact with him again. I'm like, hey, I have this new show. Will you be on my new show? And I haven't heard from him. Maybe we'll get Jamie hey, Kennedy yeah. instead. Huh. But I wanted to be like, hey, Nintendo Power winner. I know you never got to be the Mask 2. Do you want to be in a review of the Mask 2? Huh. So, Jamie Kennedy is hilarious in this. Uh, I've met him a couple times at conventions. Nice. Um, I think Mummy Cop made fun of him once. At a convention. Nice. Apologize for that. I was in character. I, Tony did not make fun of you. The character of Mummy Cop did. We have to differentiate those characters. Uh, He's Rose, really insane. Yeah. Like, by the these way. are your alter egos. <laughs> by the way, uh, this scene really cracked me up. Uh, Rose McGowan makes fun of Randy for working at a video store. <laughs> what a fucking loser. Could you imagine spending most of your days in a video store talking about movies and shit? God, I almost fell. <laughs> the, the chair almost slid out from underneath me. I would have laughed <laughs> so <laughs> fucking hard. I'm sorry. I would have been on the floor crying. Um, Sydney's house is nice as hell. They live in a fucking yeah. mansion. Did, did you? This was this scene where they were all sitting at the fountain, right? Oh yeah, oh, they're talking yeah, about how the murder happened. About that. That's a great scene. That's a big scene. Live her alone. <laughs> Live her alone. Live it's her funny. Alone. <laughs> Better liver alone. Did you, did you find out that they found her uh, liver in a mailbox? <laughs> I don't know if you should be joking about murder with a person whose mother was murdered. Like, but a they year. don't care. Obviously, yeah. none of them care. They're men fucking don't assholes. care. But like Tatum doesn't really care that much. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know like, if one of your mothers was murdered. I'd probably avoid the topic of murder around you. That's I all I'm saying. I think Tony wouldn't. He'd probably accidentally slip something up, but Ugh. yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's not much faith for you. Wow. Being honest. It wouldn't be malicious. You would just slip up. Well, this is uh, Johanna and Crystal's last episode, everyone. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, Bye, guys. I'm free. <laughs> so, yes, Sydney's house is giant, and I don't know what her dad does for a living, but holy shit, they have like a multi-level yeah. deck. I'm like, what the fuck? I want that house. <laughs> um, they all have huge houses. They what do. the hell do these people do? Yeah. And they go to public school, too? Like, what the frick? Yes, yeah. but this is where they turn on the TV and they talk about how Sydney's mom was raped and murdered. Yep. Uh, by Cotton Weary. Although I think, no, maybe they tell more of that later. Maybe not in this scene. Well, Courtney Cox also talks about it, too, a little yes. bit. So the, the backstory is her mother was killed. She saw someone leaving who was wearing Cotton Weary's jacket and cotton weary's fluids were in her mom i guess after they found her dead so she testified that it was him and now he's on death row or he's just he's in, in jail prison. he's just that. yeah he's just in jail yeah so that's the backstory yeah so she thinks they got the guy but she's still very very upset um tatum calls i got her name right wow and she's like we're gonna rent we're time. gonna rent a tape uh what was it all the right, all the right moves, all the right stuff with Tom Cruise, and she says, if you pause it just right, you can see his penis. Oh yeah, is that something girls do? Do you girls get together and pause well, Tom Cruise tapes to see his dick? No, but I find that interesting because you don't get many movies where you actually get to see a dick. Yeah, so I would be actually be like, let's try this because you see everything else yeah, you see for the boobies females, all the you see boobs all like, the time, ass all the time. You really don't see to see guys. Mm. I mean, it's not like we're like, oh, let's see some dick. Because it's not exactly, like, it's not what we're looking for, but. There should be no dicks in movies. Um, or any nudity whatsoever. I'm born again. What about a flaccid <laughs> dick? <laughs> Remember the 90s women like Tom Cruise? How just guys who like Tom Cruise? I wasn't a big I love Tom Cruise. Fan. I've never yeah. been into him at all. We have um, three action figures of him right behind you from the first Mission Impossible movie. True. I have a thing of him up here. 
I don't like Tom Cruise the person so much. I like the actor Tom Cruise, but there's like uh, girls that yeah, I know. Yeah, actor Tom Cruise is fine, but I've I'm, I don't know. I've I never been care. a big Tom Cruise. Person. I tend I tend no. to get stuck dating girls who hate Tom Cruise. So when a Mission Impossible movie comes hate, out, hate him. I don't know, but when a Mission is Impossible like movie Tom, comes out, algae I, stuff like I, I yeah, don't are they know. taking like the person Tom Cruise and mixing it with the actor and his. Point is, Craft? point is, I saw the last two Mission Impossible's by myself in theaters. Anyway, um, do I think not it's regret it. Not fun to go to movie theaters with. No, I'm very fun to go to. Movie Are theaters. you? Yeah, I'm very you fun. Did you yell at the entire theater when you? No, saw I the Mission love the Mission Impossible movies. Uh, did They're you so turn much around fun. and tell the, all, the entire audience how much you love the movie? Again, and how great okay, it was? you exaggerated. In Afterlife, I did not yell at the theater. Yes, he no, did. No. I have Justin and Marshall sitting right next no, to me. I said this in the review. I yelled at you guys in a volume that the whole theater could hear, but I was yelling at you. <laughs> We're here. The rest of the audience is here. Tony is down here at the steps. Why are directing. you by yourself? Yeah, because I walked out of the theater because I was mad. Oh. Anyway, but it wasn't even like walked out during the movie. Oh my god, enough of what I'm supposed to say after like <laughs> my comment section is still angry at me for not liking that fucking Baskin Robbins didn't even commercial. Say I hated it though. That's the thing is I said. I didn't hate it. And everyone, I'm getting fucking death threats. Be like, why you hated such a great movie? And I was like, I never said I hated it. What the fuck? Sydney gets a phone call. Sydney gets a phone call. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sydney gets a phone call. And she thinks it's Randy because of the shit, shit that he's saying. Yeah, he's she, like the one who knows all the rules. Of and the, she also the thinks Randy's stuff. voice is sexy. And we find out Randy's got a thing for her. I think those two could have hit it off. Um... Yeah, so uh, she's like, oh, whatever, Randy. And then he uh, says something about her mother to really fuck with her. I like how she picks her nose to be like, oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Um, yeah, so the ghost face attacks her. Yes. And I do like when he, she's talking about slasher films. She's like, oh, it's so stupid. Some big breasted girls running up the stairs instead of going out the front door. But then she runs up the stairs. And I feel like they put that in like every trailer. They have her saying that as they show her running up the stairs. Um, this is like one of the early movies I can remember the advertisements for. They put a lot. I remember the TV commercials for this a lot. Yeah, I don't. I remember being a kid watching the making of Scream 2 on Fox. They put really? A, they, did, they did a featurette on Fox on the making of Scream 2. <laughs> I wish I saw that. Um, I think that existed. Yeah, so her phone is disconnected. So she calls 911 on her computer. Yeah. Which What's I'm your emergency? Which I'm sure you could do, but... Again, I'm reminded of Scary Movie. White woman in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I've not seen Scary Movie in so oh long. Oh my god, I will... Oh. Can we do like a Patreon review of Scary Movie? Can we? Or I've worked track? with... Um, we met him at a convention. <laughs> uh, what's his name? John Sheridan. Oh, really? I've worked with him That's on cool. the uh, TV... Ironically, I worked on a TV show with him very briefly. He wasn't on the set long, um, but it was produced by the company who produced the Scream TV show. Huh. And I remember being in like uh, production meetings and they had notes for the Scream TV show. And I was like, huh, I wonder what's going on there. And I was like, if I play my cards right, I'll stick around. Maybe I'll be a writer on one season. How'd that work out? The guy asked if I knew how to edit on Avid and I forgot to lie. So then they never called me back. Always lie. Oh, and if you get a job opportunity and they always ask lie. you, can you do something? Just lie. Because you can always YouTube it and figure it out. That's actually how I got my job is they were like, hey, if you don't know something, what are you going to do? And I said, I'll Google it. And they're, that's literally how that, was I could, that got me my job. I could be in New York right now editing big TV shows. And instead, I'm in a video store with you two. Anyway, uh, so Ghostface attacks her. You're a dick. I should have lied. I should have lied. Yeah, you should have, actually. You're an you idiot. You see, you have a small brain that's very smooth, so. Shut up. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know how if you're smart, your brain's supposed to be super lumpy? His is small and smooth. I, I don't know if that's medically that. accurate. Yeah. You never heard of smooth brain? No. Oh, yeah. Mm. Smooth brain. So Ghostface runs away. Sense. Ghostface runs away, and Billy comes through the, the <laughs> door, no. the window. And oh my god, guys, he's got a cell phone. And wasn't it a pair of gloves, too? I don't remember the gloves. I remember the cell phone. By the way, that toy used to come with a cell phone, and the cell phone disappeared a long time ago. 
Uh, yeah, so she thinks it was him who was trying to kill her. And I do like when she goes to run out and Dewey's got the mask up. Like, I found this. <laughs> he screams too. <laughs> he's like, ah! <laughs> Dewey's pretty great in this. Yes. Um, yeah, so they arrest him because they assume he's there. She's attacked. It's probably him. One thing I noticed in these movies, the person playing Ghostface has a little bit of a glittery effect on the fabric. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's to let you know as the audience who, because later on in the movie, there's people dressed as Ghostface who are not Ghostface and they don't have the glittery effect. And they do it in like the first three movies I remember. Because huh. I think there might be a scene in three where there's like a bunch of Ghostface in the movie studio, but the only one. I have to pay attention Only now. one of them. I do I, I, that. Because when I watched it a few years ago, I did a commentary track with this a few years ago with uh, my friend Clay. Clay Von Oh, Clay. And I think I mentioned it there. I'm like, yeah, because I rewatched the first three movies and I noticed like the real killer will have a little bit of that glittery fabric, huh. whereas I the other ones that. don't. Um, I, saw, I noticed the glitter. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know there fabric. was a glitter thing, but I never noticed that that was like the thing. I think, yeah. Well, I'll put the Blu-ray footage up and I'll I'll show an example of what I'm talking about. Huh. I have to rewatch uh, it again. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. I'm a worst. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Courtney Cox fat shames her cameraman. Yeah, Courtney Cox's character kind of fucking sucks. Like, she doesn't suck, but she's like a bitch. She's <laughs> definitely a bitch in this. She should die. <clears throat> in the new one, she should die. The cameraman should come back. <laughs> oh, what was his name? I can't even remember. Kenny. Fat, fat guy. Kenny. That's all Is I that know. About. Wow. <laughs> Look who's fat shaming now. It's Kenny. Um, yeah, but they've when also. She's driving at the end. She's like, get the fuck off my car, Kenny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, That's right. We also find out. I have a note about that. We find out that uh, Sydney's dad is not where he said he would be. She said he would be at the Hilton yeah, or the Hampton or whatever. Missing. Yeah, they're like, hey, we checked the hotel. He's not there. So that's a little bit of a mystery. Um, the cop asks, uh, what are you doing with a cell phone, kid? Hmm. Could you imagine showing a kid today this movie? They're like, why is that? Why is that weird? Yeah. yeah. They'll, they'll, no, they'll look at the cell phone. They're like, why does he have a walkie talkie? <laughs> <Yeah. why did, laughs> Even in the beginning of the movie, what the fuck is that? <laughs> uh, now, you, well, now you have a fancy flip phone. It's a it's a fold. It is so Ooh. weird to me. Ooh. It's so weird. It's I, really hate the, weird. I hate the line. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know how anyway. I feel about that. My very famous friend, more famous than both of you, Izzy Nobre says he loves his Z Fold 3. Who? Izzy Nobre. Who? Uh, shut up. Uh, he loves the Z Fold 3, and he's more famous than all of you. I, I think he has it. two blue check marks, uh, so he wins. Cool, um, I can't afford that. I can barely afford my gas to get here. So... I don't know what to tell you. Uh, sell some more tapes. I don't know what to tell you. Don't work here. We have to sell our boobs for Bitcoin. <laughs> Do I, we was a, I was originally a uh, shoplifter here. I don't know. Did I get, like... <laughs> recruited into actually working at this Cr store? Crystal, Crystal, there's there's no, we don't care about the lore of this. <laughs> that was a storyline for those two specific episodes. It doesn't but matter anymore. But that's my storyline and I'm keeping it. Why the am I here? <laughs> What's her storyline? We already told the joke, but if I tell the joke again, you'll throw it back at me again. Anyway. What was it? I don't know. Don't worry, I said it in another episode. No, I don't know no, what it is. I know, I know exactly no, what it no, is. No, what is no, it? No, 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 no. So leeching. <laughs> no, no, no. So, so Tatum is very mean to Dewey. She's very mean to Dewey. Like Dewey's like, what did mom say? When I wear this badge, you respect me. She's bitch. like, you suck, Dewey. Well, she's like a cliche popular 90s kind of girl. Live with his parents. Yeah, he still lives with them. And he's a cop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a deputy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she's like really, really mean to him. Yeah. He's like, stop it. Stop, you're embarrassing Dewey's me. Dewey's adorable. I love Dewey. <laughs> um, Dewey and Stu are my two doofus, right? Yeah, do, Doofy. Oh, Doofy. Doofy, yeah. yeah. So uh, Gail tries to get Sydney to talk to her. And Sydney's like, oh, you're spreading rumors and lies. And yeah, because she's she like, believes Cotton, Gail believes yeah. Cotton's innocent. Yes. Yeah. She believes that the um, evidence is very circumstantial, yeah. that the sex was consensual between... Um, Cotton and her mother. Yeah. And that someone wore Cotton's jacket that night. Yes. Well, that comes up later, but yes, you skipped ahead. Thank I you don't very care. much. This is the scene where she talks about her book and gets punched out by Sydney. <laughs> I'll send you a copy. Oh! Oh, she gets fucking like Bam, slammed. Bitch went down. Bam! Bitch Sid, went down. Super bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the killer calls Sydney when she's at the house. So, uh oh, it can't be Billy. Cause Billy's Sydney got arrested. Oh. 
I can't talk about it yet because of the twist. I'll talk about it. I, I think I know what this whole sequence is a reference to. Uh, but yeah, I love when like they, they're yelling at him and then Dewey picks up the phone. He's like, hello. hello. <laughs> He's like trying to act cool. <laughs> Um, Cause he didn't know what was going on. Yeah. He just thought oh, that God. someone was like calling for him, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Him. Then we oh. find out because she goes to apologize to her the next day, and then we find yeah. out all that cotton weary stuff. Yep. Um, everyone at school is being an asshole. Yeah. Uh, to Sydney, they're dressing up like Ghostface, running around, which is mean. And also, they were like, "Oh, can we track who's been buying this costume?" They're like, "Everyone has this costume. It's like yeah. a popular Halloween costume." Yeah. Uh, she tries to apologize to Billy. Oh, in the school. Yeah, and then <laughs> she like goes up up into him and she like jumps and he's just like, well, <laughs> why are you, like, it wasn't me. Why are you still scared of me? And she's like, she's traumatized. Leave yeah. her alone. <laughs> uh, but Billy, Billy. Yeah. Yeah. Like she's going through so much shit. Yeah. Well, Billy says, he's like, hey, shut up about your dumb dead mom. Yeah. God damn like, it. Get over it. It's been get a over year. It. Yeah, exactly. He's like, get the fuck over it. I need to get it in. And she's just like, but yep. my mom died. He's like, don't care. Shut up. He says it differently. I'm, yeah. I'm paraphrasing. But that's actually pretty much what <laughs> he's like. Oh, my mom left town and I got over it. That is funny. He's yeah. like, yeah, that is. He's like oh, like God, your mom different. was brutally murdered. My mom left town. It's like, it's not the, not not the, same, the at same thing. Not at all. I'd be like, God, you come in, you're like, Tony, I was just like punched in the face. And I'm like, oh, man, I stubbed my toe. Relax. <laughs> But that's something that would happen. Yeah, that is what would happen. <laughs> exactly like that. She runs away. What was it? What did she oh. say? Like, sorry that my like my my trauma or something trauma, is something life is yeah. an inconvenience for you. I yeah, what, the exact words, whatever. And then she he's such a dick. Runs into the bathroom. Okay, so um, this is, she runs into the bathroom after Henry Winkler expels two kids. Yeah, and like it's oh, real creepy yeah. with that. He's like you're fucking whoring. Does blah, he blah, have blah. like a knife too? No, he has scissors. Scissors, really like sharp scissors. He's cutting up the mask and stuff. Here, he's like, I should going, slice like, shink, you shink. up. And he's like, all right. The thing is, they're making they're it's it such so a red hard. herring. Yeah, they're pushing him really um, to be the killer. So in the bathroom scene, I remember reading this a while ago. The actresses in the scene are fucking terrible. The ones who are making fun of Sydney. Okay. And if I remember right, fact check me. I think one of the actresses in the scenes was dating Skeet Ulrich at the time, so he like got her a part in the movie, mm. and she's she's awful. She's like, the one who's like bubble butt boyfriend. I think, Ooh. yeah. God, the scene the scenes cringe. Like that is what it's doing, but those actresses are so fucking terrible. <laughs> Not great actresses like you two. Cut to some of their acting from previous episodes. Your secret is safe with us. Some exclusions apply. Sometimes I wish I could bust ghosts on my day-to-day -day activities. Well, I got good news for you. Ah, a ghost! We were acting in previous episodes. <laughs> I was like, say. all of this is completely improv and like actual feeling. <laughs> Even though people think I just go off of what you guys say. Why does she not have her own opinion? Well, we I'm tell like, you what to say. You you do. You script every single word I say. Yeah. Uh, can you can you read the the next? Oh, okay. It's, uh, um, it's after the girlfriend at the time. Um, I actually don't even look at your script, so I have no uh, idea. I have my own uh, notes. Sorry, sorry. That's, that's what's script. They have their notes. I have my so own because I'm fancy broad. Oh my god. Anyway, so the girls are being mean. They go to leave, and then ghost face happens to be in the bathroom. Okay, good. I'm glad we told you to say that. Okay. Um, I like yes. How, I like how he steps down and then. Yeah, did did he, it's room? like, did he know she was going to go to the yeah. bathroom? So obviously that had to be the other one. Yeah. So was he just waiting in that bathroom the whole time? Maybe Sydney will show up. Yeah. <laughs> because okay. eventually someone would be like, why is the stall locked with no one Little in it? A little weird. Um, it's just like. There's been plenty of times, though, you'll go into a bathroom and the stall's like automatically locked. You're like, oh, I guess that's out of order. Like, it's not weird. Well, sometimes I'm like, oh, there was probably a child in here and they were craw uh, crawling on the floor and now they're like, like super drum infested. Yeah, and it's just... actually not that weird. Well, anyway, what? I don't know what happens in women's But it's bathrooms. weird for a guy to be sitting in a bathroom. Just Did he just wait there he and just crunch the toilet? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I just how remembered. How many bathrooms are there in a high school? And how many do you think he's like... Well, I'm gonna wait. This one specific one. Wait, in my high school, there was at least in. a bathroom on each floor. So, so I, oh my god, I'm waiting for him to tell me that he's hidden in a woman's bathroom. I, stall. I didn't mean to hide. So, we were filming a oh wedding. Me and god. Keith, me and Keith were filming a wedding, and the venue we were at, I saw a bathroom. There was no markings on the bathroom. 
because they just didn't have any markings. So I just thought it was just like a bathroom that you could go in. I did not realize that the bridal party was using this as their bathroom. I just thought it was a bathroom. <laughs> so I'm like in there and I'm like peeing and then I hear girls come in and I go, oh no. Oh no. And I'm like, okay, okay. Just <laughs> calm down. And I'm like, wait for them to leave and then you can you can dip out. Just don't freak them out. So I'm just like being quiet. I'm waiting for them to leave. And sure enough, the one girl's like, the zipper on my dress is broken. And they're trying to fix it. So I have like no way to get out. I'm like waiting for them. And so I like start texting Keith and I I got, there's pictures of it. Keith took a screenshot of the text where I was like, Keith, help me. I'm stuck in the women's bathroom. I didn't realize it was the women's bathroom. Help me. Oh God, the girl's dress is broken. I can't get out. So then how do you think? I was like, hey, I'm like, hey, can you send your sister in to help me or whatnot? How do you think Keith uh, went, uh, went uh, handled this situation? Brought attention to it. Yeah, he went to the front door. He said, hey, is there a guy in that bathroom? And everyone started freaking out. Oh my God. And I'm like, oh no. Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> so there's a, pic there's a picture of me like this. And like all the girls took pictures of me. And I'm like still mortified because Keith's like, this is funny. I'm like, oh, Can we, no. I want to see these photos so bad. I've never wanted something They're like, so what are you doing in here? I'm like, I didn't see a sign on the door. I just thought anyone could do it. I'm like, I'm like, but I was waiting for you guys to leave. I didn't expect one of you to come in with a broken goddamn truck. Oh my god. Also, did you I have so many questions. Did, one, you usually pee in a stall? Was there no urinals? Like these are not you didn't realize? Looking back, the lack of urinals <laughs> should have been an indicator that I was not I feel like that's your first indicator. And did you all you just automatically go to a stall without being like, I'm gonna go to the urinal and piss in a urinal like normal. I didn't see any urinal. It was like a small bathroom. That's another that's why I thought maybe it was just like a for whatever. But turns out it was not. Oops. Anyway, maybe that's, do you think that's what the killer was doing? And he was just like, I got to pee. And I'm like, oh, I'm in the wrong bathroom. And then he. Oh, what a coincidence. And then he heard the here. girls and he's like, oh no. But then he hears Sydney. He's like, oh, I got I to get the suit out. <laughs> also, is he trying to kill her in the bathroom? I, I don't get the current. Uh, weird, when we find out their scene. plan, like yeah. we'll talk about their plan. Some of the stuff doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, so uh, Gail and Dewey finally meet. I got to see those photos of this fucking stuff. And the sexual chemistry between these two is very apparent. Spoiler. It's almost like they get married. Spoiler, they get married in real life. When did they divorce? Did they divorce like somewhat recently, right? In like the last few years? I think so. But yes, uh, they they are super into each other. And I get it. He is a future WCW World Heavyweight Champion. I get her being into him. He's very masculine. Uh, and he still wrestles to this day on really? occasion. Yeah, he did I a documentary that. about it. He did, cool. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Uh, David Arquette's awesome. Where are we at here? Uh, but yeah, I do like the whole, like, my demographic is usually men between, like, 14 and 24. He's like, oh, I'm 25. And he's like, I was 24 for a whole year. <laughs> uh, the principal, for some reason, is playing with the ghost face mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's getting stalked. And then we get a cameo by Wes Craven as <gasps> Fred. As Fred, yeah. Yep. It's really good. I'm sorry. I love it. Yeah. This almost seems like it could have been in Scary Movie. Like, it seems a little too comical for but this. But it's, it's... Especially since they already it, mentioned Nightmare on Elm Street. It's a little on the nose. I, can, I love I, it. I can forgive it. I like the but there's you also, say. When is it in the movie where they uh, say... Um, what did they say? They said... Uh, about the sequels? No. Wes Carpenter. They said something about a movie. Oh West yeah, Carpenter. they make. They're like, oh, it sounds like a Wes Carpenter, Carpenter thing. Movie. They like mess it up. Yeah. yeah, I think that that was hilarious. Those little things where you're just like, <laughs> it's almost forced, but I can forgive it. I can forgive it. Um, yeah. Uh, fucking, which we call it. Uh, Ghostface kills him. Ah! Ah! Yeah. I do like that he was hiding in the corner like this. He's like. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I do like the shot of the ghost face mask in his eye. That yeah. was really cool. I wasn't sure why they killed him, but then it makes sense later. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think it's this scene where they mentioned the Wes Carpenter thing. Oh, but Rose, uh, Rose McGowan's just like, hey, look, your mom might have been kind of a whore. Uh, <laughs> she kind of says yeah, that. Yeah, everyone is so fucking mean to Sydney. Everyone. You're like, you don't feel really. Well, her bad. mother ignored the sanctity of marriage. Which is very she was enjoying very, her life. Whoa, and her life as she was fucking enjoying it. Okay, whoa, you, John, are you life. gonna let uh, your fiance enjoy his life after you tie the knot? Yeah, with me. <laughs> 
Now I can go out and do whatever the hell. (laughs) (laughs) A double fucking standard there. (laughs) (laughs) Like what I told him, like what's his is mine and what's mine is mine. A poor man. I love you, Ian. We really got to save I'm just that. Being a butthole. We got to save that guy. We got to save all these comments like Johanna's the worst fucking person ever. <laughs> Fuck Johanna. Me- meanwhile, Ian's just like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm just really high right now, so that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they I met- like that you know him that well. <laughs> I know. Yeah. They mentioned the Richard <laughs> Gear, really the you. Richard <laughs> Gear gerbil story. Have you heard that one? Oh no. You never got that reference. There was like an urban legend that Richard Gere like went to an ER because he put a gerbil in his butt. And then there's been now like multiple that you're jokes saying this, could, like over yes. the years yes. where like yes, hamsters yes. are up the butt. Yeah, no. it's been like an no. urban legend for a while. And like no. even she's just like, you know, you can only hear that story so many times yep. before you start to believe it. Because she's like, yeah, apparently your mom was stepping out with a bunch of dudes. Oops. Um, also, we forgot to mention, because this ties into later, Billy's dad looks like a fucking creep. Uh, he looks fucking weird. That's a weird looking guy. <laughs> oh, and I don't think Ghostface should be frolicking in the bushes in his outfit during the day. Yeah, they show him like hiding in the bushes. I'm like, what is he doing? <laughs> they make fun of this in scary movie though. Yeah. Where he's just like standing yeah. there like, eh. and, then he, <laughs> and then he goes like, <laughs> he goes like this. He's like, all right, she stopped looking. <laughs> <laughs> it's so Funny. Uh, this scene, I'm like, all right, this is a little too much. But then there's another scene where I'm like, that's I too I like far. to just think of just ghost being prompt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just like, does like a barrel that's into the I bush. like. I just, I, I want to combine, like, scary movies, hilarious. Scream is great. It's just, uh This is a scene you want to talk about where uh, Randy and Sue are talking <laughs> about horror movies. He doesn't like that Billy's in the horror section after being accused of murder. Yep. This is such and a And talking scene. with other girls. Mm. He's talking with other girls. Does he, he care about the sanctity of mm-hmm. relationships? But then again, she's not sleeping with him because she's crying about her murdered mom all the time. Like, get over what it. What a bit. No. <laughs> no, I, I pointed this out to you, too. Um, there's an extra in the background that's super distracting. She's like, oh. yeah, was, we was, rewatched like something the scene. like, oh, after yeah. you like, tried to murder your girlfriend and her head perks up real fast. And then she's like paying attention to the conversation. And then eventually she's just like, Shakes her head and then just like walks away. And I'm I like, had what no are idea. You doing? It's so uh, distracting. It's so <laughs> funny when she pointed that out. And I was like, that's all I could watch. I was like, it's she a, gets it. But look for it. It's, it's a blonde haired woman. And it's in the background or whatever when they're just discussing about um, how basically Billy's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I do like when Randy's like, uh, you think Cindy will go out with me? And Stu's no, reaction don't. is fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't at all. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> oh, Matthew Lillard. Uh, but yeah, Randy starts screaming in a crowded place about movies. What an asshole. Yeah. Who the fuck screams about movies in public places? Who's uh, so passionate that they can't hold it together? In I a public didn't place? scream. I talked loudly in your direction. Oh, God. You can't take Tony anywhere. You could take me places. Can we? Where? I was fine at the Resident Evil when we saw Resident Evil. I didn't scream or anything. I, I wasn't there. I don't know. I'm going to have to verify with Kieran because yeah. I don't believe you. Jessica was either. also there. I believe Jessica. Jessica. put an Jessica. editor's note. Was he out of control? And it's going to say yes. Was he loud? Anyway. <laughs> Does Jessica he talk during the, the whole, movie? Jessica just spent the whole time going like, when's the nemesis guy come up? And we're like, I don't think he's in this movie. <laughs> anyway, um, I do like uh, Billy's just like, maybe you're the killer, you fucking asshole. And everyone's like, that kind of makes a lot of sense. He probably is. He does I do like the way how he like creeps up behind them. Like, hey, like what's going on? Yeah. He's just like about? a creepy guy in general. Yeah. The whole town shuts down. And I didn't realize like how fucking funny this was until I thought about it. But they talk about who would play them in a movie, and Sydney's like, with my luck, it'll be Tori Spelling. And like Tori Spelling plays her in the sequel when they see Stab. And I'm like, fuck. I'm like, I didn't realize they were setting that up that early. Or was that just a coincidence? I think it was a coincidence, and they're like, well, now we got it. Yeah. Uh, who played funny. Billy in Stab? It was uh it was um Luke Wilson, right? I don't yeah. remember. I think yes. Luke Wilson plays Billy and Stab. I think, yeah, I think so. Oh, when they're in like the store talking about like the, I think they're going to a party or something. Yeah. You see Ghostface is stalking them in the store. You see his reflection. I'm like, why is he going around? How does around? no one notice this? Like, why is he going around in the costume? Like, put the 
Stop, stop it! it. <laughs> but that's also making fun of all the other slashers, though. Like, you just always see Michael Myers in the corner. Well, Michael Myers is doing it on Halloween. So it's like, all right, but that guy's like, just really in the Halloween. he wasn't just doing it on Halloween. Also, Michael, he's just wearing a jumpsuit and a mask. Like, at a glance, you might not even know he's wearing a costume. Like, this is fucking Listen, ghost face. Mike or Miles is Shut fantastic. <laughs> it goes around and... Are you kidding me? At the convenience store, Mike or Miles is bagging the grocery. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Uh, I do want to note, I saw a note, I have to verify it, but apparently they were going to have uh, Ghostface be all white. I saw that, but they were worried they about were like, it being... That yeah, might be a little clanny. let's not do that. Yes, I saw that too. So yeah, uh, Sydney, I think, uh, during this conversation, she talks about how she's been treating Billy, and she's like, I think it's time I let him get it in. Uh, I love that that's just become the word now. That's just the phrase for the show just now. Get it in. <laughs> Some girl said that to a friend of mine at a party, and it always stuck with me. I'm like, that's like the... What? Just do like, you want to get it in? I'm like, that's the grossest. It's weird to say it for like losing your virginity, but, but after that, you're just like, yo, you want to you get in? You wanna okay, so, you wanna... so in our episode, we talked about how it's weird that anyone would say that. And we don't know. And there we go. We have. Some... I don't care. Like, yeah, to me, I it's, it's not that. I joke with it. Like, you know, if we're just talking, it's just like how, how we were trying oh, to get it in. I don't think I've ever like said it seriously. Like, yeah, I... hey, yo, you want to get it in? Like, I, I think that's. <sighs> Hey, Crystal. Hey. You want to get it in? It works. <laughs> <laughs> so they find out that uh, the calls, the police are talking. They find out that the calls being made were from Sydney's father's phone. <gasps> but they, they throw out a thing like maybe they could have cloned his cell phone, which I don't even know how you do that. Whatever. But yeah, and tomorrow, anniversary of her mom's one murder. Year. That's one year. That's what it Wait, is. Wait, so in one year, they put that guy on trial pretty quick. That is really quick. It's probably because it was a small town. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. They have a bunch of Jamie Lee Curtis movies to watch at the park. So, there was actually a, a chunk of movies. What was mm -hmm. it? Like five or six different horror movies. Well, yeah, he was like a Halloween train, Terror Train, Prom Night. They were Prom like all Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she's the original scream queen. He like I does that whole speech. I love that speech. And then he goes into the rules. No, no, the rules come a little bit later. Technically, oh, yeah, her mother is the real scream queen, but. Um... Janet Lee. Me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she is. Mm -hmm. Do you know in Halloween, what was it? Halloween Kills. I meant to say this during our Halloween Kills uh, review. Jimmy Lee Curtis actually shows up as her mom's character in Psycho on the red carpet. Oh, it yes, was, it yes, was a yes. Costume oh, yeah. thing. And I was like, that right there is so good. In Halloween like H2O, Janet Lee has a cameo, and the car she's walking towards is her car from Psycho, I believe. I don't think I knew that. I'd have to double check, but I'm pretty sure. I'm going to believe it because it sounds cool. Yeah. You know what's really sad about the Halloween Kills episode? What? I told that like really sad story about my secret sister I didn't know about trying to kill me. And people thought like it was like a joke. And like, why well, wasted 12 minutes on this? I'm like, that was like a very personal. Everyone was wondering why the first 12 minutes was wasted on that. I just wanted I to mean, like. You, want, you need to let it go. We understand. I like, I like to talk about my feelings and air my personal drama. And I'm Clearly. telling everyone about like the fucking. The, the problem I had with my secret sister who kept trying to kill me and then also went after my kid and grandkid. And, and then she actually shows up in the episode, doesn't she? Yes, and we'll we'll find out how that ends next year, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you try like defend yourself with like an iron? Because I heard like that might work. <laughs> we should just get her on next year. I would year. love that. There's a petition, right? Did you see Halloween Kills? Mm -hmm. The girl with the iron is like a meme. I know. Yes, but I know. she's like fully, she's in the Facebook group and she fully embraces it. it. But people want a petition to have I her in next I just want to take a picture year. with her and be like... I want her to be ah, the one survivor That's the one person in my life I get starstruck seeing. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis <laughs> dies. <laughs> but the Iron Girl. Iron There's Lee only Lee. one way to stop Michael. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Gail and Dewey join the party. Yep. And Gail hides, like, the world's biggest video. Like, it is not a secretive camera. Like, it's just... After she did that... She should walk away from the TV and someone should be like, hey, why did you put that video camera there? <laughs> as much as Gail's a bitch and insane, she's actually super smart. Because the whole reason she's there is she knows Ghostface is going to appear again. Yeah. How does no one else know that Ghostface isn't going to appear again? But Gail knows. Like She she's has like, a she's, hunch. She's a smart, she's also, a smart woman. Also, there's a 30 second delay on the camera. Rose McGowan, her Tatum. nipples can cut diamonds. Tatum. Tatum. Yeah. Tatum. Tatum. yeah. Which the, there's been a bunch of nineties. What is it? There, there's there's like that meme where it's like when they tell you it's not that cold and it's like a picture of her. That like 90s? they are super. Like they are distracting. Like what what's going on here? 
Her and Jennifer Aniston and Friends. Those are like the nipples. Like when you think <laughs> 90s nipples, it's like them too. Uh, yeah, she goes to get some more beer and then she gets scared by a cat. Cliche. Uh, that goes through the cat flap. That goes through the cat flap, setting up the cat flap. Uh, fucking ghost faced is there. And I like that she's not taking it seriously. And she's like, don't kill me. I want to be in the sequel. Want to play psycho killer? Can I be the helpless victim? Uh, but then you want to play psycho killer? And he's like, yeah, mm-hmm. but then, then he Can I play her. the victim? Mm-hmm. How many times have you hit that mic? I can't. I, I have to sit over yeah. here. I'm always like, <laughs> whack. <laughs> yeah, he hits her arm first. Yes. yes. He just takes her arm. She's like, oh, so, excuse me. And then ink. we rewatched that scene, though. And we were saying, I wouldn't know who the killer is because it makes a big impact on a relationship. And I'm curious if it's. I know who it is. Do you? Do you know who each one is? Yeah. Throughout the whole movie, no. But see, in, that's what I want to know. I want to know who did what. In I this, do too. in this particular scene, I know who it is. Uh, we'll get to it. Well, when the killers are revealed, yeah. we'll come back to because this we because we don't want to give any spoilers. Sure, I know who it is. Yeah. Because no, it's it's pretty obvious who it is. Really? Yeah. yeah. He gets his ass kicked by her. She's like breaking beers, beer bottles over. It. By the way, the smell of beer doesn't just come out. So later on the party, someone should be like, hey, man, did you like spill beer on you? What's also, going on? Why there? are you super bruised and right in the Yeah, why are you yeah, bruised there's... and swollen and like, what the fuck? Because he does like no a blood, front flip no into bruise. the stairs yeah. and gets shattered. Um, but yeah, she tries to crawl out of the fucking uh, cat, cat flap, flap and he crushes what her with the garage. Oh, and I have in my notes when I, great kill. when I was watching in my notes, you see like Ghostface, he's just like, I, I, in my in my mind, I feel like he's just being like, I didn't think that would work. And just like, huh. okay. Uh, just, huh. <laughs> not exactly cool. what I wanted cool. to do, but all right. It worked. Uh, it's a cool kill, but the prop head of hers getting crushed is a little yeah. fake looking. Yeah, but I liked the kill. It was, I think, the most creative kill. In this one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Billy finally shows up to the party. Yeah, do you have something in your eye? Yes. Okay. Uh, he finally shows up uh, to the party and um, what you call it? Uh, where are we at? Uh, oh, he shows up to the party to get it in. And Randy is sad because he thought he had a chance with Sid. Poor Randy. Yeah. I love like Randy's such a sweetheart. As creepy as he is. He's no. just like that awkward. Well, then Billy's using his lines. He's like, life is just all one big movie. And she's like, he's like, you don't get to choose the genre. And she's like, I'd settled for a, uh, what was it? Like rated R or like, she's like, I'd settled for like a cheap porno or something. Oh, I don't remember that line. Yeah. Randy yeah. has a, is it, are we getting, yeah. Randy's. We're getting to the rules. Yes. I love that. Number one, you can never have sex. <laughs> So they're watching Halloween. It's the scene where Bob gets stabbed and the guy goes, oh, the blood is all wrong. They always mess up the blood. And I'm like, I know that scene from Halloween. It's way too dark. You don't actually see any blood. They should have known. They should have known. And Stu, who's in the living room and has been there for a long time, uh, he asks her, he asks, he's like, hey, um, when does she show her tits? And he's like, not until uh, training places. Yeah. Um, but then he does the rule to survive a horror movie. And he's like, you can't have sex. Everybody boos. Everyone boos. Those are popcorn and stuff at him. Yeah. Yes. And he's like, those are the rules. And then he's like, you can't drink because it's an extension of sin number one. People keep yep. booing. <laughs> People keep booing. He's like, and by the way, never say you'll be right back because you won't. And of course, Stu's like, you want any drink beer? And he's like, yeah. He's like, I'll be right, right back. back. Uh, but yeah, he's like, like oh. he's like freaking out about it because uh, he cares about movies way too much. What a loser. loser. Um, oh, and as this is happening, Sydney is committing sin and getting deflowered. Uh, yeah. I like how she's just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll give it up to him. Now. Like after every all the trauma, she's just like, you know what? Maybe getting laid for the first time is going to fix it and make me feel better. If only there had been a Bible in that room. It could have turned things around. Uh, but as that's happening, Randy like picks up the phone and it turns out the principal was like gutted and hung up on a goalpost. So, yeah, like, the football goalpost. So everyone's so excited to see this that at the same time, Dewey and Gail are checking out a car that got reported on. Mm-hmm. And the kids are so excited to see the dead principal that they almost just run over Dewey and Gail. 
Yeah, and then they're just like outside the like the sunroof too. Yeah. Like, bah! yeah. And uh, they've kind of hinted, they, they kind of suggested that maybe Dewey's the killer. Yeah. Uh, but no, they they roll into the bushes and they're together like together on top of each other. Yeah. Ooh. They uh, roll into the bushes and they find out that it is Sydney's dad's car. Yep. Mm-hmm. Dun dun dun. Sydney gets dressed and she starts to question who Billy called when he was in jail. I know what they're implying, but I feel like your calls are monitored. I guess maybe you can get a private phone call. Um, no, they have to be monitored. I feel like they are. It would be easy to be like, who do you make that call to? Check our records. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, she's questioning him. He's like, you don't think it's me? She's like, no, I'm just saying blah, 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 blah. But then his face comes out. Yes. And it stabs Billy. Ah! Oh, my goodness. That's the worst thing that can happen. He's reaching for her. He's like, Sydney. And she's like, I was just deflowered and now my boyfriend's dead. Oh, no. Ah. Uh, But yeah, Ghostface uh, chases her around the house. Uh, She eventually jumps out a window, right? Mm -hmm. She climbs out a window. And I like when uh, Ghostface is behind Randy and he's like about to kill her. But then he hears, or he's about to kill Randy, but then he hears her outside. And this scene's awesome when she goes to the fat camera guy. She's like, help me, help me. Oh, she also saw Tatum, too, in that moment when she was running. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, right. yes. She's like, help me, help me. And he looks at the camera. He's like, oh, no, that guy's going to die. And then he walks out. He's like, oh, shit, the delay. And then pfft, he gets killed. <laughs> um, yeah. Which that was is pretty cool. Great. Rest in peace, Kenny. Rest in peace, Kenny. He uh, <laughs> he was nothing but abused. <laughs> hey, you do feel bad for him. Poor Kenny. <laughs> So she she's gets, in the car. Oh yeah, she gets in the, in the car. car. But um, what happened? The uh, the keys were left outside. The keys were left outside, and yeah. she's locked. And so she's, she's locked in the lock car. And he's trying she's to break in. Back and forth, trying uh, to lock them. Around here, though, is when Gail comes back, right? No, okay. she's she is in the car, and she's uh, in the car. He has the keys. Ghostface has the yes. keys. Yes, he has the keys. He shows uh, it to yeah, her in the window. Yeah. But at, yeah. Some point, at some point, at some point, she crawls through the back. Yeah. and escapes that. At way. some yes. point, Gail gets in the because van. Of, yeah, and then all of a sudden, because that's when Randy kind of. Kenny. Yeah. Kenny. Uh, Kenny. Yeah. There's blood. But Randy, oh, like, asks for help and Gail punches him in the face and then she crashes her car and they think yeah. she's dead. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's, then that's, there's, there's the car. There's blood all over the windshield yeah. and then she yeah. goes to clean it and then she, like, hits the brakes or whatever and Kenny, like, flies in front. Poor Kenny. Yeah. And then Dewey stabbed and I think he was supposed to die. I think so, really? too. I'm pretty sure that's what I read, too. Yeah. I think he was supposed to die there. I'm happy. Um, but yeah, when Sydney finally gets he gets out of the car, in the spine, right? Yeah, Ooh, when uh, that, Sydney, you would have been paralyzed. What is so you? he's supposed to have a limp, but then it goes away. I think in like the third or fourth one or something Maybe. like that. I forget what it is, but he was limping at one point. Yeah. Huh. So she gets out of the car. She runs toward the house. She grabs Dewey's gun. Yeah. And then Stu and Randy are both like, "Help! Help!" And he's like, "He's the killer! No, he's the killer! No, he's the killer!" Uh, so she locks both of them out, which is really mean. Fuck you both. <laughs> and uh, I mean, Billy is yeah. still alive. He's, he's really, he's powering through it. Yep. And he opens the door and he lets Randy in. And then he shoots Randy. Yes. We all go a little this bad sometimes. Because yes. Billy's the bad guy. A little crazy. I can't believe, psycho. I can't believe. Yep. Horn syrup. <laughs> I Just like in Carrie. I can't believe he quoted that Vince Vaughn movie a couple years before it came out. How'd he do it? So yes, he Why is. You laugh at your jokes. He yeah. is the bad guy. He's the killer. Uh, so you know she bumps or into Stu. Oh yeah, and it's like is <gasps> Stu gonna help her? But he has the little voice changer yeah. that they both use. Yes, it's both of them. Surprise, Sydney. Yep, they are Which both really the is killer. A great. Yeah. Little twist. So I, I, you, I don't think anyone going into that movie would ever have seen yeah. them both being. So here's it, how I think. So like it, it is foreshadowed pretty closely, but I feel but like you don't notice that until like, you see it. Yeah. It's you know what like, my problem is? I would have personally cut the blockbuster scene because I think that gives it away a little too much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you're going and seeing it for the first time, I don't. I think it gives it away a little too much. Ghost. I don't mind the blockbuster scene. I don't. I would have had him act differently in it. Because it gets, I feel like it gives it away. So here's what I think. After I you think, see the movie the first time and then you go back yeah. and rewatch it, then I can see that. But I yeah. think seeing it for the first time, you're just like. So I think Stu right. killed Casey because they said they used to date. Yeah. Because Billy was then at Sydney's I house. I think that too. Yeah. I think that too. Um, and then I guess Stu also kidnapped her dad while Billy was distracting her. I can see that. Yes. Okay. Spoiler, they kidnapped her dad. I think Stu definitely attacked Sydney in the house because Billy. there's no way Billy could have gotten dressed yeah. and yeah. around that quick. Stu attacked her in the bathroom. 
Okay. Because she just talked to Billy. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who killed. The principal. Yeah, I don't know who killed the principal. Maybe it's Billy because I, then Stu was at the thing and Billy, Billy showed up. It could have been yeah, either. I think it's Billy because Stu was um, already there. I don't know who's stalking them in the bushes or who's following no, them around the them. grocery store. <laughs> it's both. Or maybe those were just random people. I, who knows? Talking with them. Was there glitter? Uh, I couldn't tell. They're so far away. <laughs> And then Tatum definitely got killed by Billy. He okay, didn't... you said yeah. that. That's what I said. Yeah. That Billy didn't... We were talking about it earlier because yeah. we were rewatching the scene. And I said that the cutting on her arm definitely seems like a Billy thing. Yeah. yeah. Suffering. Yeah. Just to because, be like fucking yeah. with her. Like, hey. Because he, I, he didn't show up to the party yet. And yeah. Stu was in the living room with everyone. Yeah. Well, I don't know how far apart that scene is. Yeah. The I'll be right back either. I do like. Well, that happens before the I'll be right back. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it does. It so does. he said, I like later on, they're like, where's Tate? I was like, oh, she probably got mad at me and laughed. Just <laughs> Stu, it's interesting because I was like, maybe Stu would have killed her because they have that relationship. But also towards the end, you see Stu's not really emotionally like. Yeah, so we find so out. Curious, what would he, yeah. would he have actually killed Tatum? Yeah, would he I like the uh, I like the uh, we mentioned Randy had that thing earlier where he's just like uh, it's the millennium motives are incidental. <laughs> but Billy does have a modem. He does. But he also says like, because she's going saying, what's your motive or whatever. And what did he say? Uh, he said, oh, did uh, Hannibal Lecter need a motive? Like she goes in, no one needs a oh, motive. I, I realize I've been saying modem and not motive. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you are hanging out with me way too much. Sorry. You're a bad influence. I am a um, That's why you don't want me Hannibal to Lecter with, like, didn't have a your, motive uh, until the family. second book. Yeah. And then the fourth one. Uh, but he said, he said, did uh, Norman Bates have a motive? Yeah. His mother. He said, does Norman Bates have a motive? Did Hannibal Lecter have a motive? No, you he don't was, need a motive, but... I feel like Norman Bates might have, because his... Yeah. It was more as he was crazy. Yeah, yeah. But he does have a motive. Uh, he tells her that uh, her mom was uh, sleeping, with, sleeping her with her dad. Yep. That's why his Years mom ago. That's would, why his mom left. His mom, who was at the time of this filming, was on the set of Roseanne. <laughs> um, yeah, his mom left. Messed him up as a kid. Uh, so he blamed her this whole time. Stu looked really, like, Stu looked like he didn't know this, too, whatever. When that was being revealed, like, he was, like, looking like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, you didn't tell me this. Uh, yeah. I wonder how he got Stu into this. Like, was Stu just like, well, well, Stu, does, Stu does admit his thing. Um, yeah, so he. Uh, <laughs> no, but I still want to know. Like, it's just like, hey, like, let's just do this. Like, yeah, yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah I love you. Idiot. He yeah, said it was fun exactly. killing her mom. So they admit that they killed her mom. Yeah. Uh, and that uh, they set up Cotton Weary, so that was pretty funny. And they planned to do it again. They planned to kill her and then stab each other and then blame it on the dad who then kills himself. And the whole thing is that they're left for dead, but they actually yep. survive. Because his uh, thing is gotta uh, gotta plan the sequel because these days you need to have a sequel. Yeah. Stu, like fucking Matthew Lillard's acting is I fucking love, ridiculous. I fucking he becomes a different what, what character. What did he say about uh, fucking uh, Sydney? Like, oh, you're no Sharon Stone. <laughs> yeah, you're no Sharon Stone. You know you're not. Yeah. Oh, your mother. Your mother's no Sharon. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Your mother. You but I love, I love it. He's just like, but this part's the best. And you're going to love it. I'll be right back. And he brings back the dad. He is so fucking um, good. So yeah, they, uh, they start stabbing each other. Which is psychotic. Yeah. Yeah. So psychotic. But like, they're kind of like, they're fucking it up. Like, they're yeah, kind of yeah, getting a little carried away with it. They're, they're somewhat smart. Yeah. Oh, no, they're just being dicks. It's like, oh, you stabbed me this hard, so now I'm going to stab you super fucking hard. Yeah, when you mm -hmm. get two psychos like that together, they're like, mm -hmm. you know what? That's why I'm shocked all the other murders went off pretty, yeah. <laughs> pretty successfully. But yeah, so then they go to do the grand finale with the gun, but the gun's gone. By the way, the cops would have saw duct tape residue on the dad's face and pants even if they tried to clean it off they would have been like wow there's a lot of soap on his face after he died they're not the smart they're not the smart they just because they watch horror movies and he even said uh what does she say she goes oh you, watch you guys have watched too many horror movies and they go no it's um uh, oh, no. look she thinks uh horror movies create uh psychos but it just gives psychos uh, more creativity yeah he's like don't blame the horror movie. that is the thing like no one's ever like watched a horror movie and they're like i want to kill now killed. they're like no. they're just fucking weirdos and everyone think there's a whole thing of people that are like oh if you love horror movies you're a crazy person you love murder and blah 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 it, no that's not 
It, it gets your adrenaline pumping. It's I agree. Fun. It's, it's the damn video games that do it. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it, it, or it's the music. Those that gosh, Marilyn Manson, all of that music, you know, causes people to no, go all, crazy. All the moms Marilyn in the nine, all the moms in the nineties were right about Marilyn Manson. <laughs> um, so it turns out Gail is alive, and she stole the gun. She was left for dead, but she did not die. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she's gonna like thwart their plans, but she doesn't know how to turn the safety on. Yeah. I also like Sydney. Was just like I like that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a new ending. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they uh, they get distracted by Gail and Sydney escapes and turns yep. the tables on them. She calls them. Not so fast. We're gonna play a little game. It's called Guess Who Just Called the Police and Reported You. Sorry, motherfucking ass. How yeah, the I, turns tabled. Yes, <laughs> but I like when she's talking to Sue. She's like, what's your motive, Stu? And he's like, peer pressure. I'm way too sensitive. He's like, did you call the cops? No, no, no. Did you really call the cops? Huh? Yes. Yeah, what if she said? You bet your ass yeah. I did or whatever. And my mom well, and dad, dad are, are going to be, be so mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that that's his motive. He's like, peer pressure. I'm or, far too sensitive. Or when he's talking, um, was it uh, Stu's on the phone, like screaming at Sydney, and he like chucks the phone at uh, no Billy's talking yeah. to Sydney, and he chucks the phone at Stu, and he's like, "You hit me with the phone, dick!" <laughs> um, it is so so there's so many iconic lines in this movie. Yeah. It's, it, oh my God. I'm feeling a little woozy. The writing uh, is so great. She fucking uh, bursts out of the closet in the ghost face outfit and stabs Billy with, with an, an umbrella. umbrella. <laughs> Which is, and then you at the same exact time you have the Halloween movie happening. And I do like, yeah, the Halloween music it. happening. It's yeah, in the background when uh, he's in the closet. Um, so Gail is like passed out on top of Dewey. Yeah, because they kicked her ass out and she passed out. But that's when they they're about to shoot her, and yes. that's when they saw, oh, everyone's gone. Yes, and uh, so after then, she hits him with the umbrella. Yep. Uh, Stu attacks her and she throws the TV on him. So. His line apparently was ad lib saying, I've always had a thing for you, Sid. Oh, yeah. Because they were actually dating during the time of the movie. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So then, yeah, she's So the way he says it, too, the delivery. So yeah. I've always had a thing for you, Sid. <laughs> like, so, so, yeah, the TV, oh, the TV gets thrown on his head and he gets electrocuted. I remember reading this years ago. Apparently, in Scream 3, the idea was that Stu was still alive. Like he had been in a coma. It would have been a better movie. You hate Scream 3. I do. The Scream 3 is the weakest. Um, uh, and the idea was like he's manip- he's like uh, talking to some kids and trying to motivate them. But they they kind of figured out, they're like, wait a minute, Stu wouldn't really be our ringleader. That'd be a no, little weird for Stu to do. No. It's like that weird Home Alone sequel yeah. where they got, where Marv is the, yeah. but it's played by someone else. But yeah. it's like, no, nah, this seems like a Joe no. Pesci is the brain. Yeah, He definitely was. However, the new movie, because now they're doing legacy sequels like yeah. Halloween, where they try to connect it to the first. Because like, four already covered remakes. Yeah. This is trying to cover like the, the, the direct sequel reboot sort yeah. of thing. I think Matthew, uh, Matthew Lillard is coming back. I wouldn't hate that. I wouldn't hate it either. At all. I love, I, like, I love all the Scream movies except for three. Yeah. Like, it wouldn't make sense character-wise, but as a parody of, like, it makes sense yeah. on what they're trying to parody. But that's what they do anyway. Yes. That's so, the whole That's why I wouldn't mind it. it in this. Yeah. That's why yeah. I was mad that they called it Scream until I realized they're making fun of sequels yeah. that do that. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, that's funny. That's funny. As long as they don't try, what, I, what I'm worried about the new one is that they make it too serious. This, I don't this think whole franchise is not supposed to be that well, serious. Well, it's going to be interesting because this is the first one without Wes Craven. It's got two but directors. They I all think. weren't supposed yes, to come does. back, like um, the whole original cast, because they didn't want to not do it without Wes. Yeah. But then apparently something in the script made them, or mm. money, yeah. uh, made them go, like, okay. You know what it was? So. It was Halloween 2018. They're like, oh, that did really well. Yeah, we're coming back. You no know, money. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, uh, Stu is dead. Uh, what you call it? Randy is alive. He's alive. He's he never be. He never thought he'd be happier to be a virgin. Well, that was pretty funny. That was funny. Uh, yeah. Oh, and and I love this line where they actually tell Sydney too, like, "Oh, you're not a virgin anymore, so that means you gotta die." Oh That's right. The rules. Those are the rules. Those are the rules. Uh, but Billy is still alive, and Gail, I think, shoots him. Yeah, Gail shoots Gale him. Gail shoots him. Yes, and then he uh, comes back for one more scare, and then I think Sydney, Sydney shoots, shoots him, him in the head. head. Yes. Yep. So he's, I mean, I think that's technically. He's dead. 
Well, I mean, I, I think technically she would go to jail for that because it's like, okay, that was unnecessary. Uh, no. he, was he was still like going to jump up though. So. Uh, yeah, I feel like, you know, me, if you're going But also at that point, you know, she wanted to make yeah. sure. I mean, L, like the fucking horror movies, you think they're dead, but they're not. Yeah. Shoot them in the fucking head. Uh, but yeah, it ends with uh, Gail doing a report, but we see Dewey get thrown into an ambulance. And I think that was added. Yeah. They're like, we can't kill this guy. Yeah. We got to keep this guy. Uh, yeah, and then the credits play over some weird song, and then they do, like, the weird where they show the cast, like, smiling. I'm like, what the fuck? Why is that in this? 90s. Might as well 90s. Predator did that, too. Predator has that yeah. weird where, like, the cast is, like, looking at the camera, like, feels out of place. <laughs> no, wait. It's, like, at the end of a, I don't know if you guys ever, like, at a, like, BDSM kind of porn and stuff like that, at the end of those what kind the of- fuck? Porn. A lot of times you see the porn actors and stuff like that come out and they start talking because they're funny. Yeah, they come out. <laughs> so that is Wes Craven's Scream. Really good movie. Really good franchise. Now, the second movie's not as good, but it's kind of making fun of how second movies aren't as good. And they, yeah. they rush that second movie out fast. Mm hmm. I still enjoy it. I Which, liked it a lot. But like what, that all how, works. How for, quick was it? It was. I, I feel like it was the next year Scream 2. Wait, the tape's right behind you. Tape's right behind you. Got next to The Shining. Next no, to The Shining. That scream, that scary movie. Between Secret Window and The Shining. Ah, I did it. I don't, I don't have everything memorized. I know Disney They did there. the same thing with the cover again. Yeah. It is. 90s. It is. It's 120 minutes long. Oh my God. Where the fuck? Where do you it would be at the bottom, right? That's what I was looking. It doesn't. I'm right, there's no date there, right? There. No. <laughs> Hold on. Whoa. Are you looking 97, 97. Oh, right. okay. So it is the next year. The next so they year. rushed out the sequel, but that. Where is it on this though? I don't, say I don't know. Whatever, we figured it out. We figured it out. Still curious. We figured it's it out. Principle. Chuck, it. <laughs> Chuck it at his head. So they rushed it out, but that's kind of funny because those sequels were being, sequels to slashers were getting rushed out. Yeah. My problem with three. Three is all about trilogies, and it's like slashers aren't trilogies. They're not. Slashers very, and that'd be one thing if like that was like the joke, how it was like the fake final chapter. But I don't mm -hmm. think they're really playing it up that way. I mean, I mean, it conveniently it worked out that way because yeah. the fourth one. But the only great trilogy of a horror movie I've ever really seen, like a franchise, is like Halloween three. It's not even a trilogy. That's just a, another it movie. It's still Halloween 3. Um, and it's the best third of a franchise. But franchise. Uh, 4, I think, was really funny with the reboot remake angle. The, now, the TV show... I love Roberts. Holy yeah. fuck. Now I the, love her. The TV show... Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. Season 1 and 2 is its own universe. Mm -hmm. First, explain what it is. Like, what's the premise on it? Because I have no idea. So, it's actually... It came out pretty timely. So, it came out after... Um, like the Hannibal show, mm -hmm. the Bates Motel show. Ooh, okay. So yeah, this yeah. is so the new thing is turning a movie into a TV series. Which I'm okay with. But what was weird was that like Scream, like Scream didn't exist in this universe. Yeah. But it was very. So it's like the what is it? Was it Friday the Thirteenth? kind of t series? No, because like it was still very similar to Scream. It just wasn't in the same continuity. Okay. But it was like the same idea. Whereas Friday Thirteenth, the series was just fucking had nothing to do with Friday yeah. Thirteenth. Yeah. Um, but no, it was really good. There was like a mystery of uh, this killer. We never find out anything about the dad. Yeah. There was like a whole mystery, but it never got solved because season two was weak. And then they did this awful Halloween special where all the characters bump into some other killer and it was garbage. And then they canceled that version of it. Then they did a reboot season where they got the actual mask back. Mm hmm. And that one's also not in the continuity of no. Scream. Yeah, so that's... So they a, didn't have the mask until season... The, season three, yeah. The mask they had for the TV series was cool. Yeah, it was good. But no, the TV series, it did a good job of, like, doing the whodunit, doing the modern day thing, uh, making fun of how these TV shows will... Like, what was another one? Uh, From Dust Till Dawn turned into a TV show, too. And, like, how you take the idea for a movie and just expand it. Uh, okay. And that was really good, but season three was fucking trash, and I just turned it, it off. It was really bad. I got four like, episodes really in, and I'm like, I'm really fucking bad. done with this. Uh, so what I'm glad the movies that? are coming back, huh? What year was that? That was like recent. That was like two years really? ago. Yeah. yeah, it was right oh, yeah, before shit. COVID. I'm thinking Netflix, like if you 2000, watch like a little late 2000. Nope, like, nope, 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 nope. Recent. No, no, no. The no. Scream series started in 2016, I God think. Damn. So yeah, uh, season one's good. Mm -hmm. That's all I can say. Two's okay. But it, it, it doesn't pay But off. I should watch it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I like it. But 
Yeah. I still need to watch the Chucky series because I yes. heard this is pheno- that's phenomenal. I don't mind the series when they're good. Mm-hmm. Like the Chucky's. I still, I still want to watch Friday the 13th TV series. It's really bad. I mean, that has nothing to do with the movie. I know, but, but I still know. want to watch it. Yeah. Uh, what, but others, no. what other movies turned into TV series? There was Hannibal. Hannibal, Chucky, oh, Scream. Clarice. Base, oh God, Clarice, yeah. Um, yeah. Friday the 13th. There's more. There's more. Yeah, there's a, there's a I'll handful. look up a list. Yeah. Huh. Uh, but yes. Oh, you know what? Last time I remember hearing this before COVID happened. So who knows if it still happened that John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness, they were going to remake mm. as a TV oh. se- series. I love Prince of Darkness, that but that would be, be cool to see, see a thing expand it. Yeah. Now, uh, I'm excited for Scream five. I yeah. am too. I'm interested in it. I don't may, I hope it still has that Wes Craven magic. It's going to be hard to replicate that. As long as they don't make it too serious. I, as long yeah. as they keep the same, you can't take four movies mm. and change the vibe completely. Mm. You can't then all of a sudden try and turn into a serious horror movie because that's not what it is. That's not the premise of the movie. No. So as long as they keep that same vibe and the love of what makes these movies what they are, I'm sure I'm going to love it yeah. because it's such a great franchise. But yeah, and we will we will be back with that one. Yeah! One day we will be back with that one and uh, I'm calling it Matthew Lillard's coming back. I really hope so. I would love that. I'm yeah, calling it care. now. We're going to reference this footage when we do Scream 5 and I'm right. We're going to play this video that Matthew Lillard will be in Scream 5 and if I'm wrong, I'm gonna be I'll... Sad. Ooh, what are you going to do if you're wrong? Take us out to a nice dinner. I'll take you guys out to a nice dinner. <gasps> but that's not going to happen because I'm going to be right. Anyway, what thank you, you for watching. Nice. Make What's sure to nice like. Dinner? I'm going to go to Outback. I am down. They got like I love the, Outback. Yeah. Sometimes. Thank they got you some for good bread. Thank you yeah. for watching. <laughs> Talking about bread. bread. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Everyone loves bread. <laughs> Please like, share, and subscribe. Yes. Join our Patreon. Yes. Yeah. Patreon is a lot of fun. Uh, go to our merch store. It's the holidays. Go to our mar- merch store. Uh, please sign up for Patreon, please. Maybe one day you'll upload my Disney stuff at Patreon. Maybe. And there could be footage of me yelling at an old lady who yeah. tried to line cut. So we have... We have the Teespring store and there's also the Screenwave store where you can get our posters mm-hmm. and stuff. Uh, so check that out. Feel free to call us. Maybe I'll actually do a voicemail episode for <gasps> this. Yeah, call and, us, and talk and to us. Happy, happy anniversary, Scream. Yay! And happy holidays because the movie came out in December, yes. I guess. Yeah, for <laughs> some sure. reason. And there's no Christmas stuff at all, but whatever. And we'll sure. see you next time. And in the comments, tell us what's your favorite scary movie. What's your scary movie? Yeah. yeah. Favorite. But like I'm talking about the the scary movie franchise, scary movie. What's your favorite scary movie? Three, three is pretty scary good. Movie? Three, three is my favorite scary movie. Three, I'm like these scary movies. Yeah, yeah. Oh, three, absolutely three. I like the first four, I and know. then the rest of them, I'm like, eh. yeah. I saw four. I know four's though, okay. Mm. It's not as good, but it, mm. I wasn't the biggest fan of four. I was just like after three, I was like, you can't do any better. Maybe it's because it also had Eight Mile in it. Maybe that's why I loved it. So oh much. my god! All right. <laughs> Also Bye. in the comment, also in the comments, let us know what your sexual awakening was. Bye. <laughs> Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talk, talking, talking about tapes.